So for part B, we're going to verify the answer in part A. But this time we're going to use a different formula. So the formula is that if we have two separate components, the total energy required to create that entire configuration is equal to this expression. So the electric field coming from the first component plus the electric field coming from the second component plus the dot product of both components and then integrating across all space. So for our configuration, we have two spherical shells, one with radius A, one with radius B. And then earlier in the book, David Griffiths actually proved that the energy required to construct a spherical shell as is actually equal to 1 over 8 pi epsilon q squared divided by r. So r is going to be the radius of your shell. So in this case, this component here, E1, I'm going to take that to be the inner shell with positive uh, uh, electric uh, charge. So that's going to, be, going to be equal to this, just substituting the r for a. And then the same goes for this. So this section is going to be the outer shell. So David Griffiths actually already proved these two results, so I'm not going to redo it. So now we need to uh, try to evaluate this expression over here. So let's try to focus on this expression. So E1, what exactly is E1 and E2? So when you go from 0 to A, so once you're inside both shells, the electric field is going to be equal to 0, right, thanks to a shell theorem. So this whole thing is going to be equal to 0. And then once you go from A to B, so in this section over here, E1 is going not going to be positive, but E2 is going to be positive, again, thanks to the shell theorem, because you're inside of the big shell. But once you're outside, the uh, both of E1 and E2 are, will be non-zero, and then this whole thing will be non-zero. So essentially we have a triple integral, and it goes from B to infinity. So it only exists outside of the shell, all the way to infinity. But then of course it's going to encompass all space. So I'm just going to need to use spherical coordinates, so I'm just going to fill in these uh, bounds first. So E1 is going to be equal to 4 pi epsilon q divided by r squared. So r is going to be, so say I'm here, this distance will be r. And for E2, the field coming from the outer, outer shell is going to be negative r squared. So this is a dot product. So I say that the, sh the field coming from this shell is going to point outside, and then this field is going to point inside. So they're pointing in different di uh, opposite directions. So when it's a dot product, it's going to result in a negative sign. And so it's going to be result in a negative sign multiplied by the product of their magnitudes. So essentially it's this expression over here. And then the volume element is just a tiny bit of volume based on uh, spherical coordinates. So that's just that. This is pretty standard procedure. So we can try pulling all the constants out first. So 16 pi square epsilon square plus or negative q square. And then you see that there are no phi terms. So I can get rid of the integral from 0, zero to 2 pi. There is one sine theta term. And then integrating from 0 to pi, that's equal to 2. And then for the r term, it goes from b to infinity. And then we have so we have r to the power of 4, and then r squared. So it adds up to 1 over r squared, dr. So this is a rather simple integral. It goes from b to infinity. So these positive signs. So we get negative 1 over b. So this is the this integral over here. So now combining it with these two results, so we're going to have this expression plus this expression, and then minus epsilon times this integral, which we just evaluated. So I'm sorry, there's going to be a square for the epsilon. So once we multiply by this epsilon, this epsilon is just going to go from the power of 2 to the power of 1. So we get negative 4 pi epsilon, and then q squared over b. So you see we can actually combine these two terms. So 1, 8 minus 1 over 4 is just negative 1 over 8. So we get 1 over 8 pi epsilon q squared over a minus 1 over 8 pi epsilon q squared over b. 
and then if you group the like terms together and q squared with pi epsilon you get uh, 1 over a minus 1 over b so this is the answer which is identical to the one we've gotten 